Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode, Simi and I are going to be talking about our ooh, ah, Nebraska States Tournament and a little bit more. This episode 471, howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan humor. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. They're going to be able to edit that out for sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. ILH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you're doing some shopping on Shop.WizKids.com, the official source for Hero Clicks, go ahead and use code DIALH10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. Simeon, what's going on this week? Oh, yeah. What's up? How's it going? Oh, it's that it's that perfect time of year where this hasn't happened to me like in any memory that I have, but for some reason I am just absolutely craving popsicles and like shaved ice, like you wouldn't believe. Oh, I know it's okay. I know it's just cold water that's you know uh, sugar sprinkled frozen? on it, basically. Yeah, it's just yeah. frozen water that like sugar is like inside of. Uh, and I never got shaved ice as a child because, like, you know, my dad was like, "That's it's just sugar water. You're paying for sugar water. No. <laughs> like, you know. And I have that same mentality as an adult where I'm like, oh, I can't believe they charge this much for just water and sugar. Uh, but my boss bought a bunch of popsicles. So I've just been <laughs> mowing down. And even, like, the bad ones, like the pina colada. Uh, oh, the, yeah. Gross. The lime, I guess the lime's not bad. I don't know. Most of them are fine, but like I've been eating all of them, and uh, I'll have to get myself like my own little box soon because I've almost had at least one popsicle every single day of, of work for like the last two months. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make like put a shaved ice maker in in my shop <laughs> so that I can just like take a bucket of ice over to it and just make myself some snow cones while I'm working. Oh, jeez. Have that's, you seen that that's one That's the dude's... level of depravity I've stooped to. Uh, <laughs> that one, like, skit where the guy's like, oh, yeah. Uh, would you like anything to uh, to drink? Would you like anything? And he's like, I'll yeah, I'll have water. I'll have a snow cone. Dude, <laughs> why would you? What are you talking about? I was like, what, what, what do you mean? I was like, well, ask for a normal household drink. Yeah, I, I, I have a snow cone maker or like whatever. It's like, dude, that's Simeon. That's your new goal. Have, have your snow cone maker. Come yeah. back in. I have like doing five some snow work, cones a day. Go in for a break, have some snow cones, go back out, finish the rest of the day, grab a snow cone for the drive home. Basically, that's, that's where I'm living at now. There you go. <laughs> it's, you know, Jeez. it's hard to get me to drink water, but eat it. Yeah, eat, eat it. it. Oh, yeah. I've definitely seen you have more ice than I have water. Come to <laughs> come to think of it, that does track. Yeah, that does make sense. <laughs> Just with like the beverages that I typically have. Yeah. Uh, Simeon, what made you happy this week, my man? Is it is it snow cone related? Is it alas food related? Oh, no. Oh, Ooh. it could be. I did have uh, the second part of my steaks with my new grill. Um, I thought they were. I thought both packages were T-bones, but uh, the second package was actually chuck steak, which still good, still fine steak. I still grilled it, um, but I, it was like, I think 40 ounces, and there's two of them in there, so I think the second one I'm going to, because I didn't make both, I decided not to. Uh, the second one I think I'm going to slice up, I'm going to grill it, slice it up, and uh, make like a burrito out of it, because there's just a, a lot of steak there. It's a lot. But no, that's not what made me happy. Uh, what made me happy uh, this last week was getting back into the groove of judging things again, getting some rules questions. It's been a long time since I did anything other than online rules questions and like looked at because I I never comment usually. I probably shouldn't comment online because oh, there's sure. always someone that's more correct than I can be correct. Uh, but uh, it was fun going back into like the seat of people asking questions, looking stuff up on the fly, second guessing myself and just kind of getting into that mentality, getting into like some weird kind of rules interactions that like 
one of them was like a super simple question that I should have just known off the top of my head, but I was like, ah, uh, I didn't actually look at this when like the newest rules came out, so I don't know if. Uh, mm. But it was it had to do with first turn immunity, and if you leave the square that you start in, do you still have first turn immunity? And no, you do not. If you leave like your starting area, which is like your starting square for most characters, then like you lose first turn immunity, and they can attack you on their first turn. Uh, yes, that was something where I was like, I don't know if that changed or if that stayed the same with uh, the whole like starting areas now being a starting edge and all that. Mm. But yeah, it didn't change. Still, still, you can still <laughs> attack them. Makes sense. Makes sense. But yeah, that made me happy. It was cool. It was cool to get back into uh, the groove of uh, telling people incorrect rulings, but they have to abide by it because they're in my venue. And it's <laughs> my rule. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Love it. Uh, what made me happy this week? I went and did some action figure hunting. I always love it when I can smell that fresh action figure blood in the wild and go hunting for something. I'm a big Marvel Legends guy as a surprise to no one. Um, But usually I skip like 90% of Marvel Legends waves because uh, there's a lot of X-Men, a lot of Spider-Man, a lot of movie waves. Um, And there's a lot of uninteresting like Build-A-Figures that I just don't care about. Last wave, I collected all of them was Disney Plus, and that was only to get Falcon's full wings and all that stuff. Um, and that I literally like, sold, sold Scarlet Witch, sold Vision, sold White Vision, uh, sold like whoever else I had to sell, like, I think Loki and stuff, um, and then just kept all the Falcon or Soldier stuff. Very rarely, I guess that's a lie, I actually did buy straight up the entire wave of the controller, but it had a beautiful comic accurate Blue Marvel US Agent, um, Speedball, Viper, and like an okay Iron Man and a really weird uh, the Empire Chase type Thor. Thor. So some of those figures like give and take, but that was another great wave that I collected all of. And finally, there's a Marvel Legends wave that is a build a figure that I actually really really want. And that's because they slowly make the Serpent Society throughout these years. And Puff Adder, excuse me, Cottonmouth is. <laughs> I always get the two confused because they share a sculpt in your clothes. Uh, Cottonmouth is the build a figure. And the wave is actually really solid, but I don't want to pay like $25 for these action figures back when they used to be like 20 bucks when I first started collecting Marvel Legends. And even way before that, when I would just sort of collect figures, they were like 10 to $15. You know, Marvel Legends, they were like 18 to $19. Um, Marvel Universe was like 5 to 10 bucks, and those were dope. But Target had a sale. Um, they had a sale on Captain America, the Ultimate's Cap, and they had a sale on... Yelena Belova. I was able to get Yelena Belova right away. They're half off, twelve fifty. And then I'm like, okay, Cap wasn't here, but it says the little sticker says Cap's on sale. So while I was at work, I asked somebody who I knew worked at Target, and they said, yeah, usually if it's like not just a clearance thing, it should be on sale at every Target. I don't know why I didn't, you know, think of that. I guess, but I was just like, why would it be on sale at every Target? I guess also was where my brain was at. So right after work, I rushed to the Target on my way home, and sure enough, they had one Ultimates Captain America left, and he was on sale, and I got him for twelve fifty, and I was very excited. And he's a great figure. I love the Ultimates Cap costume. I think he's the first figure that has the shield in this size that doesn't have holes in it, like the. 10th or 20th anniversary Marvel Legends Captain America. He's got great scale mail. I love the gray under his armpits. I've always been a big fan of that. I like the big red and white stars on his shoulders. Uh, The A or even a little shield on the shoulders is fine or even nothing is cool, but I do like the big star on the shoulders. I love the star on the back. I I love the gray on the armpits, though, and the very tactical brown belt with, like, the uh, military pouches and everything is just... I don't know. Ultimate's cap is just a good design. I've always liked Ultimate's cap. It doesn't stray too terribly far from a normal cap design, but it has a more military, military, military esque look that's just really fun. So being able to hunt for these figures and get them nice and cheap and not at the ridiculous twenty five dollars they want for a Marvel Legend nowadays is great. And it was just great. It was just fun going on the hunt. And there's only one left in the store, and I was like, yes, I got it. Nice. So yeah, I don't know. I love the rush. The rush of the hunt. Call me Craven. The song, like, do you ever hear the song when you were a kid? Uh, like the baby beluga in the deep blue sea. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, 
I do for know some reason, mean. when you said Yelena Belova, that's the first thing oh, I thought Yelena Belova. Baby Yelena Beluga. Belova in the deep blue sea. <laughs> <Deep. laughs> I don't know why. Uh, no, Ultimate's cap always read to me, like, in Ultimate's universe, always read to me, like, what if Nuke, like, became Captain America? Was Captain America? That's pretty fair. That, like, that's it's a very always gritty read and mean yeah, Captain very, America. Very militaristic, very, like, matter-of-fact, but also just, like occasionally a little too aggro a little too uh full of himself kind of he's violent yeah yeah he's or i mean i guess he could also be um gosh i don't i don't know there's a few characters that they could have based him off of more of but he does read that way it's just yeah 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 i haven't I picked up any uh any marvel no. selects or legends lately i saw somebody with that the last thing that i saw that i really wanted was that uh that cap juggernaut combo thing oh know. yeah that custom though yeah, yeah that custom was just super cool but yeah. i don't know what it is about people reprint re like painting stuff as captain america because it, it happened once in hero clicks and this is like also a popular thing in the marvel legends community because like the og juggernaut that came out in like 2006 or something he they someone did a repaint of him as cap all those years ago and then the one you probably saw was like the newer style juggernaut. Yeah. I was also repainted. And I don't know why people do this so often, but then yeah, in Hero Clicks, they did like there was that infamous cap sentinel that was on eBay super right. early on. That was the repaint of just the original sentinel. Then they the cap, finally released the cap color normal. Just like as easy as like Spider Man colors must be. Oh yeah. I mean it's just red, white, blue. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. like simple. You can pretty much repaint anyone to like have his suit deco. You know, I mean, you could say the same for like Spider Man and stuff, but it's like you can't like do like Batman. You know, you can't give him like little wings and a cape, right. and that's like all that worked. No, not really. But yeah, it was just a ton of fun. I love going hunting for action figures. I need to try to go to more garage sales while I'm here and really try to hit the hit the stomping grounds of stuff. I did. I don't know if I said this on the podcast, but I was talking to my little brother one time when we were also in Target, and I was saying how people will sometimes hide things under the shelves. And he's like, what do you mean? You can't hide anything under there. It's just bolted to the ground. I was like, no, 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 no. You can lift up the bottom shelf. And there's like a little space where there's just kind of like yeah. dust and old little stickers and stuff. And he's like, you're kidding. And I'm like, no, I'm not kidding. Check it out. Yeah. And so we look under a few shelves shelving. and it, it took me two tries. And we found a sure enough, like an Iron Man action figure from last year down there. And he's like, you're <laughs> kidding me. You planted that. And I was like, no, I swear I didn't dude. I totally didn't. And it was just really funny. I was like, man, I've, I have found stuff down here. I've never found anything I want to buy which I don't know, good or bad, I guess. Sometimes I'm like, man, I, I still have I'm holding out hope for like action figures from like four years ago that someone forgot about that I want, <laughs> that someone just hid under a shelf. But yeah, like we, we sure enough, we found something under the shelf and he was like, this is ridiculous. The collectors are insane. I'm like, yes, yes, they are. Yes, we are, I should say. Yes, I am. But yeah, so much, so much fun. And that's for those that collect action figures, I guess. And we can move on <laughs> with the rest of the show. <laughs> We had our ROC Nebraska States tournament this weekend. Oklahoma also had theirs, and I'm sure other states had theirs. I don't know who else there did, was a, but yeah, uh, I think Wash handful. Uh, I don't know. There's some Pacific Northwest ones that popped off. Okay, um, this weekend, and I can't remember. Gosh, where's where's Gen Con? Cause Indiana, think, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. I think I think Indiana also had one then, because I think uh, I think Jalen Major won that one. I think oh, it nice. was a state. It might have just been a, like a random tournament that was going on at the same time, but I think it was the states. But and yeah, there's a lot of states that had stuff going on. Thinking about that, I suppose we should talk about the one rules change that we didn't get to last week that did happen before states, because this is kind of important if you want to go over yeah. that, Simeon. Yeah, we talked last week about how some people were interpreting the Hulk, and uh, I gave my take on what I thought, how it read. Uh, but regardless, WizKids needed to clarify and issue an errata because it was just too much up in the air, too many people arguing over essentially how it could work. And so uh, not before all the states, but on June 15th, they posted – well, no, not June. June 15th was when they posted the Avengers 60th. This came in later, but I don't remember – what day it was but yeah it was right before ours like a day or two before ours so i think it was saturday or maybe friday but anyhow so this 
errata is for the non-prime hulk prime hulk and also abomination rare all from the same set have a path of destruction trait uh, it now reads when hulk or abomination whichever one you're, it is applying to is given an action after resolutions, if he destroyed a piece of terrain during that action, heal him one click. If a terrain marker was destroyed during that action, roll a d6 and heal him half the result instead. So it now says when that character specifically is given an action instead of when, like, they move. Uh, or I don't think it's even said move. I think it just said when they destroy originally. But yeah, so this errata will now mean that it cannot trigger with Dark Phoenix. Uh... It also means that at most, in what I can tell, uh, you can only give a character two types of actions. You can't usually give them two double, like a double action in a turn. So to give Hulk an action or Abomination an action, it would be like you move them or you attack with like one of these objects. The other option would be a free action if they have like the cloak equipped. That's like another type of action that they could take. And then after resolutions, you could heal another one. So it is limited to one heal per action. And most characters, unless I'm missing something obvious, are limited to two actions, really, realistically, at least. One free and one costed um, well, per I turn. I think if they still charge, it's a mo- it's a like power move, and then it's making an attack is free, right? Which would oh, be that's, that's a free true. action power. And so there's also, still a way to do it three times in a turn. Yeah, you could also technically like hypersonic as a power action. Oh, there you go. And like one or no, that'd be that'd be one action that you'd still just heal one for that one action. Um, you're right. It's an action that has like two separate moves. Is all right. So because yeah, an charge attack, would be you don't want a free make one an total or action. The attack is part of that action. So yeah, you would. You'd be able to de- either roll the d6 or like heal one from the terrain that you burst through. Ah. I don't know. But yeah, he he's a lot better now, in my opinion, because for 10 points, you shouldn't be able to heal to your top 90-point dial in one action. In a so single move, yeah. Anyone that wanted it to stay the same, I don't, I don't know why you even play this game. Like, you... Yeah, you're you insane. Just, uh, that's right. you want pull out the N64 and plug in some like cheat codes because that's essentially what like people were doing with him. Is ah yes, infinite health cheat activated. I gave him an action, just and now so he's top much dial. fun. Yeah, I love wow. playing cool. when I instantly have an advantage over my opponent. But yeah, uh, that's the that's the errata. That's the only new one that we had, and it happened almost immediately after we were done recording. So we we're done recording had it uploaded before uh that came out and we couldn't really adjust accordingly funny. so but yeah uh i do think there was there's some rules questions i don't know how relevant they are but there's one that gets into uh if scarab's using the ultimate nullifier um he has to use the six squares that the nullifier says it can't be like through his trait it has to he still has to be within six squares there's that one and then right. the other one was um oh that uh, the other one's a really old one so that's not new so yeah okay i think it's just the uh the ultimate nullifier is that's like a slight update i think i said it might work through his trait but it does not it does not work through his trait he still has to be within six it's still really good it's still probably too good because you can use. Uh, Ian was telling me like you could use the emo modifier, not emotional modifier, the radioactive clay to mind control. And if they don't want to get within six of you, then you use the radioactive clay and you just keep making them hit themselves. And then if they do close mm-hmm. that gap, then you are within six and you use the ultimate nullifier. But yeah, I'm just glad I'm I'm a judge and not a player. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty fair honestly it was it was tough uh so jumping into the roc uh if you don't know prizing i wasn't aware of it i guess it's all a just full set of batman team up right simeon and you knew the breakdown better than i did it's like yeah each lantern ring and its constructs yeah the, um like for the kind for of the different. cost of an a state's kit a very good value like if this was that's a what i would say if this was a purchasable thing online insane value so the states kit right. costs 250 and they're suggested uh 
cost for like entry is 30 bucks we did 25 i think we could have done we could have gone with 20 pretty easily and still made plenty of money because we had 24 people show up but for the top eight it was snake draft with first going first obviously and you picked a chase and then a prime or super rare and then you either got you either picked the legacy card lot or you picked a lantern construct lot and that was like all like part of your first choice was chase uh prime or super rare and then lantern construct lot or uh, legacy card lot and the legacy card lot i thought would be like part of the first choice but i mean those lanterns also go for an insane amount so not surprising that those also were in there um because yeah tristan got third and he ended up walking away with the legacy card lot which i was just like geez like that made it all the way to third like i kind of thought you know like world's finest like there's nice crazy stuff in there but yeah uh that was first through eight they just snake drafted down and then there was a bunch of other prizing so it was a full set so like the cur and the utility belt uh, CUR minus primes and utility belt was one of the prizing for 9th through 16th. Uh, the play at home kit and the LE or whatever you want to call it, the uh, the fig that you can win in the sh- in the store was part of the prizing. Oh, for, sure. Um, yeah, 9th through 16th. Uh, the dice and token pack, the starter kit, uh, the mystery cards, not including the mystery cards that were that way in the starter pack starter or whatever. Yeah. And that I will say as far as like factory, like a full set of like everything in this goes, this was like the worst possible way to package this. Like it, everything got there safely and like, so yeah, it's I can't rough. complain too much, but Holy cow, everything was mixed and matched. And like, it took a, like me and two other guys, 30 minutes to get everything out of bubble wrap. Luckily we had somebody working like judge stuff while people were playing and we had ample time to do this. Cause I didn't think ahead to be like, Oh, we need to, we need to get everything like sorted and stuff, but just sorting like all the, like literally a full set of stuff, but then also pulling like the starter set stuff out, the play at home kit, like shaggy out the LE Scooby out. Um, and then figuring out which maps went to which, which cards went to which, like all of that. And I don't mean that character cards. I mean, the, clue token card things the detective whatever those are all of that like we had to separate it all because all of it was just you know random and then inside of the starter kit was also the play at home kit maps so like that threw me for a loop too because i i was like i don't know where the maps are for uh that shaggy because he's supposed to come with a map (laughs) and yeah it was inside the uh play at home kit but again and like there's nothing online that i could see off the top of my head so i had to do it from like memory and other people's memory because i was like i don't know which map came in specifically you know which set which was like the release day map and which one came in the play at home kit so it was a long annoying process but at the end of everything an amazing deal for them like for the 250 dollars investment to get people like what i consider a decent amount of prizing for one through 16 people um, I don't think anyone walked away like super unhappy unless they were just out of prizing altogether. And even then, I think almost everyone that showed up and didn't leave early got something. I think some people left early and would have been in prizing, but hopefully the they at least had some fun. But yeah, that was yeah, that was uh, the prizing structure at least. Yeah, I mean that's really good. I think for what it costs for a kit getting a full set of batman team up and honestly out of all the modern sets even though i like have a full set of batman team up that's still probably the best one that i would be most interested in like choosing stuff well not really that i would be interested in but um i would say if i didn't own all of batman i'd be like that's got so much opportunity so much like good stuff yeah it's like if you walk away with a cur set that's easily my favorite cur in modern right now and currently batman to me is still like the best set of the year uh, with Spider-Man and Avengers 60th in the mix, I'm. You guys know I'm not a DC fan, like over whatever. So it's like, man, Batman is just an awesome set. So I like it. I will say the chases are not super high value, um, and that is a thing that affects it. But you know, the green constructs are, the blue constructs are, the rings are, stuff like that. Like, there's still plenty of value in the set, even though it's not just straight up the chases. 
and like I said, they have it's like the most fun curse set I've played with in years. It's really awesome. Honestly, the chases are probably like one of the weaker portions of the, like the set as a whole. Oh, they definitely it's, are. It's, it's really funny really that the set. chases are really weak. Yeah. yeah, and it's still a great set to be like get stuff out of. And even then, at least there's Batman and Scrappy. And then for people that are just kind of like, you know what, I do want to play the Mystery Gang, but I wouldn't like, wouldn't buy them for twenty, thirty bucks. But I would totally play them. And I was like, all right, I'll pick one and see what I get here. I totally would have Might taken start. a fourth Shaggy. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> Goodness gracious! I still need to run that team someday. Or Shaggy meta, the three, the triple Shagster meta. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, so I'll go ahead. I'll get started with what I played. Uh, Ian and I both drove up. By drove up, I mean twenty minutes across town to to the venue. Um, I'll go over my team really quickly. Some of my games that I played. Uh, I had Captain America: The Avengers, uh, Fantastic Four, Empire legacy card the one that makes the free attack i had chip with the emotional modifier i had tempo i had flash with cloak of levitation i had the iron spider at 30 points i had saint walker at 30 points the blue ring molecule man star sapphire with her ring i also had the legacy alan scott green lantern with a green ring so i can make double green constructs that is the main team and then on the sideline i had scrappy do scroll spy agent colson and then because I had sideline slots left, I also had Carnage, Captain America, John Walker, Captain America, and Captain Gwen America as my cheerleaders, because it's pretty funny. My maps were Robinson Park, Wayne Manor Grounds, and Munich Escape. I played three games on Robinson Park. Nope, that's a lie. I played two games on Robinson Park, one on Munich Escape, and then I played one on Ultron's Lair. I uh, one map two times and then my objects i had well my terrain was the big round platform from measure 60th the shipping container from spider-man and the pool of lava which spoiler alert never did anything but it did make (laughs) my opponent change their positioning once the entire day they were like well i'll sidestep here and i'll shoot and i was like well you sidestep there you end your turn you'll take a damage and they were like oh I guess I'll sidestep here then. They were still able to shoot the same person, but still, the pool of lava. Kind, I'll take that as the pool of lava doing something. I'll take what yeah. I can get. Uh, my first game was, I thought was going to be really scary, and then it ended up not being super scary, and I'm not going to say anybody's name, uh, but it was a double Carnage Silver Surfer. It was Scarlet Witch. It was Venom Magneto. It was Prime Hulk, and it was Sakari and Iron Man. And I was like, oh my gosh, this... Is not a great start to the day, but the positioning on my opponent wasn't great, and it was able uh, to let me alpha. I was able to kill Venom Mags, Scarlet Witch, and a Carnage Silver Surfer in one turn, and then I was able to knock back his other Surfer to where he could really only take a shot against my KC Green Lantern, which luckily, and I do mean super luckily, he somehow rolled a three on that attack. Um, and with no prob and stuff, it, uh, it was yeah. very convenient for moi. Um, so, yeah, especially when he has like a 17 defense. Uh, it's kind of insane that I got that lucky. Um, and then I was able to slowly take out that surfer and then Sakarian Iron Man and the Hulk. The Hulk was able to heal up a little bit. I think overall, probably the biggest mistake was he invested a lot in the Hulk and then didn't do too much with him. Because he gave him the cloak versus Sackman the cloak, and Sackman was just really slow on tempo for the game uh, because not having the cloak. And then, luckily, speaking of tempo, I had tempo, I had the emotional modifier, and that means I could drop a bunch of boots and take out these Carnage Surfers. It was actually, you know, I'm not going to say it was easy, but it was, yeah, when you don't have your two rollouts, then all you've got is toughness, and then I knock you on to uh, whatever. Eventually, you get on your just regen click, and I just free ping you for damage. And it's like, all right, cool. Goodbye, Mr. Surfer. And then same thing with Scarlet Witch. It was like, well, uh, you don't have shape change. You don't have whatever. I have Battle Fury. Even when you get down to your heavy reducer click, I still do more than three damage. And bop, you're gone. Like, it's really it's really nice. So, like, that team had a good showing against really meta stuff and played really well. My second game was against Grant, and this one I will say his name, uh, because Grant knows what he did. No, uh, so I won that one, 300, uh, and not even 300, this is actually important, I got 295 from that team, very important here. Um, my game against Grant, Grant's whole team was so he could crit hit Pulse Wave you with Prime Thor. He had double Spiderling from the starter set that can make a <laughs> dice replacement effect, and then... 
He also had Venom Magneto. He had, of course, that Thor at 75. He had Sackman. I think he had some other stuff on the team. I went up. I alphaed. I bared in that Thor with an alpha strike, but I didn't kill that Magneto right away. I worried too much about just killing both of the spider girls and I only killed one of them and I think I killed one of them and then Scarry and Iron Man that's what I killed that opening turn um, and then I was like yeah I'll just barrier and Thor and he can't pulse wave uh, forgetting that Magneto could just TK away the barrier and I was like ah yes you can do that now shoot so he did get a pulse wave off it wasn't a crit pulse wave thank goodness but it was still a doubles pulse wave which hurt a lot of my team uh, but the last three turns were basically after I killed everything but Thor, it was me just keeping him barriered. I just kept barriering him in with stop sign. If stop sign would have ever gotten double tokened and had to clear, I would have just barriered again with uh, Star Sapphire, so I could have off and on barriered, honestly. And then I just said, all right, well, Chip's giving everybody Battle Fury, and then I just had the chainsaws roll until they uh, roll until they finally killed Thor. And that's kind of what had to happen, because I was out of people that could also deal damage, and yeah. That was like three or four turns where I just kept burying Thor in, which is like not a fun way to play, I understand. But if he would have literally got one more attack off, he would have killed my entire team. So it's kind of what you had to do in a uh, competitive scenario. So I won that game. I was able to wipe that entire team. I got 300 points. And then my next two games did not go great. Uh, third game, me and Kevin are playing at the top table. Kevin is playing a mystical Scarlet Witch team. He's got Saturnine. He has Arachnite. He has Scarlet Witch. He has Mad Jim. He has Chainsaw Wonder Woman. I think that's everything. Maybe he had one more character I'm forgetting about, but whatever he did, he had 300 points of mystical stuff. It wasn't uh, wasn't Kazar or something, but it was some other stuff. And this team was really tough. He instantly goes very defensive with the... Uh, so he wins map, puts me on a small map. He goes very defensive with the Rune Marker where all the squares directly outside where his characters are is ruined right so it's this you know it's the three by three by whatever it is technically for scarlet witch is ruined so scarlet witch is right in the middle of her rune and her little rune area and then the team is i can't be adjacent to anybody but mad Jim, who has two barriers next to him um to attack and still have powers and then if I have anyone even one square outside adjacent uh, to like Mad Jim or anybody else, they instantly don't have powers, which is really tough. So uh, the game was like, man, and, and I there's probably a better way to have played this game, but I had no real ranged attackers, like not really good ones. Like, yeah, sure, Chip has range. Captain America has range, I guess, you know, like really low ranges here and there. But uh, none of them can do much to scarlet witch i do have two outwits and i probably could have started to try to get into a position to take pop shots at scarlet witch but we like did three turns where i just barriered and then he just said okay i guess i passed turn i barrier with mad jim and then i kind of shuffled i moved flash to the other side of them. usually with scarlet witch i i put my figures on two opposite ends of the map especially on a small map so they're not clustered together uh so they just don't all get ruined so then i moved my flash over to the other side ruined don't ruined get ruined. don't get ruined uh and then i just we i kept burying up and he kept moving and i was like i you know i was like, man there's no way for me to really get your gym there's no way for me to battle fury punch you and get tempo adjacent to get rid of your super senses on scarlet witch my ranged combat attacks are gonna be uh, what was it it was literally gonna be like only chip and he's like a 10 for two and then it would be like same thing. St. Walker has five range. Chip has six range. Those are my biggest, I guess. Yeah, Star Sapphire also. They're all 10 for twos. So I do have two outwits. The The only game plan would have been, and I didn't really think about this at the time. Instead, I just looked at my team and I was like, wow, I can't drop any construct that's worthwhile. I can't get any good range attack off. Um, this sucks, you know? And probably the course of action would have been slowly take pot shots at Scarlet Witch and then do enough free barriers where it's like whatever and then try to make him come to me but after a few turns of us just burying in and i'm not proud to say this we were just like he was like do you want to roll off and i was like i honestly was going to ask you if you wanted to roll off so i'm glad you said something so i was like sure let's let's take it as ian said take it to grand falls casino and see if we can gamble and win big and when i rolled off my dice were a two and a four and his was a two and a six and i lost that game and i was like ah shucks 
well, it is what it is, you know, nothing I could do. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was kind of lame uh, to do, probably. I mean, if I would have known I would have lost the roll off, then yeah, sure, I would have would have went for something, <laughs> you know, probably still should have. Um, and especially if I knew who my next opponent was, I definitely would have done something completely <laughs> different because my fourth opponent was Isaac, uh, not the little kid, Denki, the very old man. Uh, and he was playing Prime Spider-Man, who I hate and who I know really hurts and messes up this team really bad. Uh, his build was, I believe, uh, Scrying Iron Man, Prime Spider-Man. He had Venom Magneto. He had Molecule Man. And he had... Blue Marvel, and I want to say that was everything. He also had Chip. Yeah, I believe that's everything. And I was like, I'll barrier up as much as I can, but I know he's got Molecule Man, I know he's got Spider-Man, and he's got people I can pick up with super strength and whatever. And even after all my barrier, he was able to come up and get rid of some stuff, and Iron Man was able to energy explode, and then I freaking Spider-Man did too many things, and I'm like, well, shoot. I'm hurt bad. I, I lost one Construct Dropper, and then I also lost somebody else lost flash right right away i really wasn't terribly hurt a thing i loved in each game was that captain america has seven clicks of life and he has a free attack and he has all this great stuff and it doesn't matter what his attack value is attack value gets down to a seven and eight who cares i have iron spider who means i can be an 11 to a 10 and then close combat expert is a plus one then avengers team ability is a plus one so really healthily when he's healthy he's hitting at a 14 attack and then even when he's not very healthy, he's hitting at like a 10 or something, you know, which is really solid. 10 or 11. Uh, plus also St. Walker. Actually, St. Walker makes him a 15 right away, which is nuts. So, Thanks. but anyways, you know, and I, and I love that. And it's great. It's really cool. Um, and then Spider-Man was all up in my face. And then Sackman's right there. And Chip is even carrying, is being carried by Sackman. And I'm like, shoot. And then he's got Venom Magneto adjacent to Blue Marvel. And I'm like, ah, shoot. So, like, next turn is, like, Spider-Man does even more dumb garbage, and then Sackman can do dumb garbage, and then Chip could do something, and then Venom could free TK, TK again or something, maybe, and then get Pulse Wave by Blue Marvel. And I was like, this is a terrible scenario for me to be in. I should have probably went for points, and I was like, this is the healthiest. My brain was like, this is the healthiest your team is going to be. Like, period. He already lost so much stuff. If there is ever a time for you to try to kill Spider-Man... Now would be the time, because we still had tempo. And I was like, okay, all he has to do is not get that many impervious rolls, and I can one-turn Spider-Man. And if I can kill Spider-Man in, like, two attacks, which is plausible, if he doesn't get impervious, then I'm good, and I can go. Yeah, it takes all of my attacks to then not kill Spider-Man. He hits four, ladies and gentlemen, four impervious rolls. I crit hit him, like, three times for so much damage... And it's like five. Oh, great. Five. Oh, great. Six. Okay, awesome. Five. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I already knew I hated the Spider Man. And I think he might be the most unhealthy figure for the game. That's with like Prime Hulk in mind. That's with everything. It's literally just that protected outwit just kills my team. Yeah. And no, ladies and gentlemen, it's not because I didn't build a team that could handle <laughs> Spider Man and didn't have any exploit damage at all. No, 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 no. It's not my fault. Somebody else's fault. Cause I, I hate that piece. That literally playing against Prime Spider Man, he might be my new Mary Marvel. Where, like, if I see that across the table, I'm just like, well, I hate you. I don't like you anymore. You're my least favorite human being on the planet for the next 45 to 55 minutes. <laughs> I will uh, say, I there's not a like many things that make me feel more joy in Hero Clicks than hitting an impervious roll after getting crit hit. Like, that is, mm. for some reason, I just, I'm like, yes. Super senses doesn't work anymore on it. Like, you, or I don't know if it ever did, but like, you can't roll super senses for a crit hit. You can't do a lot of stuff to get right. away from that. But the old impervious still holds through sometimes. They weren't. They weren't real crit hits. Technically, they're Saint Walker crit hits. But still, oh, yeah, sure. I hate. I hate impervious. I'm I'm done with it. I hate that Spider Man gets to go across the map. Oh, cool! I have two tokens. I picked up your barrier. I already smashed you with it, and then I get a charge flurry again for free. Oh, and then I also have steel energy, and I heal two. And then oh yeah, all that damage you did, and I also just pulse wave myself. Yeah, well, guess what? I heal two, and I'm back at full. So you can uh, shut up and die. And I was like, wow, I am counting down the days for Pegasus Captain America to be legal. He is going to be a breath of fresh air for me because he just nukes that Spider Man. Well, your defense power, huh? You want super senses? You want pervious? Little baby, little baby Peter Parker wants to do impervious? No. Arm bjorn to the face. Shield to the face. I can't. I literally can't wait. So that was that's how it went. I went two and two. Both my losses were total wipes because it was a roll off and then it was just slog fest uh, playing against 
Isaac and that prime Spider-Man. So I made some bad tackle decisions. I won't lie. hundred percent. But uh, I was proud of the team. I really liked how the team performed when it needed to perform. Um, anyways, went two and two, missed cut. Only one two two was going to get in, and that two two that got in was Ian. As we go into his team now and tell you about the cut. Yeah. So uh, I'll go over all the top eight teams and what I believe is order. I think. Let me double check. I don't. I don't know. These aren't in order. Uh, oh, okay. I know how it is. Okay, so uh, eighth was Ian. Uh, his team. He was running a world's finest with Sakarian Iron Man, Cloak of Levitation on Sakarian Iron Man, Sky Tyrant, uh, Chip, Sky Tyrant unequipped, Chip with a Green Lantern ring, obviously, uh, Venom Magneto unequipped, Mad Jim Jaspers with the Carter Shield, and then the Commissioner, um, and then the Utility Belt was on world's finest. So. All of his sideline slots were equipment, so he had all black Necro Sword, which obviously would probably go to Sky Tyrant, I think, because that's a power action only kind of thing that Mad Jim could do. That's not a swap in for any of the other stuff. Uh, Dark Hold, Waldo Arms, Blue Ring, Cloak, or Shock Gauntlets, uh, and Emotional Modifier. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot about this team. I wasn't able to watch a whole lot of like the games, sadly, uh, but. Luckily, you will get to see this team in top eight go against Kevin's team. Uh, I'll go over Kevin's team at the end here. So seventh was Ed Shelton. He was playing a X-Swap kind of situation thing. It was X-Men themed uh, on part due to Apocalypse and Genesis. Fun fact, when I was checking in all of the uh, sheets... Ed's team came in at 265 and I was looking at it for a while and I went over and I said, Hey Ed, um, he also didn't put down the point value for Magneto. So I was like, well, no one's going to play. It was the X DPS one or not X DPS, the house of X one. Um, and I was like, no one's playing that Magneto at anything other than 25. So it's probably 25, but I went over and I was like, that Magneto is 25, right? He's like, yeah. And I was like, all right, you came out to 265. So like, what are you missing on here? And he's like, uh, I was like, I saw APOC and I was like, do you also have Genesis? And he was like, yeah, that's what it was. But anyhow, there we uh, go. APOC Genesis, both at 35. Kate Pride uh, from House of X. That's the one that drops the Lockheed bystander at the beginning of the game. Gives you a free perplex and energy explosion bystander. Sakarian Iron Man with the Cloak of Levitation. The, uh, some some set rogue i don't know i don't know what set this rogue's from it's 45 point rogue i don't know um <laughs> uh he had the sword bearer trade on apocalypse and i'm assuming not on genesis because i don't think he had enough points for that uh and then professor x with the whole the swappy professor x from uh x-men rise and fall that's where that rogue is from okay x-men rise and fall and then uh, no, it's not. I don't know. I can't see these letters very well. It looks like <laughs> H something PC 003 Rogue. I don't know. Off the top of my head. Um, oh, they like the Ten of Swords OP? Because she was a rare in the main. It or that's might like have been. House of X, maybe? Might be House of X, and I just can't see the letters very well. Uh, but yeah, Apocalypse with Swordbearer, Professor X, uh, with the Sinestro core ring, so apparently Professor X wasn't he wasn't uh, swapping himself out, or he was just to drop the ring. Uh, and then the sideline pieces that he had was Emma Frost, Bishop Prime, Jubilee, Magic, Polaris, and Hope Summers. So pretty solid. Uh, he made yeah he was top seven, so I think he got beat out in top eight. But um, it's cool that X swap still with like all of its troubles still uh has some legs to stand on so that was eight seven and then sixth was lucas van holland i can't remember who lucas played in the fourth round but I he was against alex mater okay did alex win in that game no no because lucas played against kevin for the final no i mean I mean round four, not in the top four. Oh, round. Oh, sorry. Right. I don't know who he played against round four, actually. Because I, th- I think someone beat him, and that's why he was like fairly low in the... Uh, 
Yeah, he ended yeah, up going three four one. rounds cut to top. I thought eight. he played against Ethan on the last round though, and I didn't think he lost against uh, Ethan. But I don't know. I wouldn't think so. Maybe he lost one of the earlier rounds because him and Kevin Something like did that, maybe. play in Swiss, right? I honestly don't remember if they did or not. I don't remember. But <laughs> anyhow, Lucas Bliss was playing uh, World's Finest with Utility Belt, Sakari and Iron Man Cloak, uh, Sky Tyrant, Venom Mags, Mad Jim, Molecule Man, The Commissioner, and The Dark Hold on Venom Mags. Uh, and then sidelining, similar stuff, Waldo Arms, Blue Lantern Ring, All Black Necro, uh, Pumpkin Bombs, Emotional Modifier, Shock Gauntlets for that sweet, sweet knockback. I'm not going to tell you what the tarot cards were because i don't care um tristan was apparently in what i have listed as fifth yeah uh fifth seed going into the top eight he was running uh sakari and iron man silver surfboard on sack man which is interesting choice but it works uh sky tyrant venom magneto molecule man u.s agent's shield on molecule man Felix Faust with the Sinestro Core Ring, Saint Walker with the Blue Lantern Ring, Commissioner, Hulk, Cloak of Levitation on Hulk, and then a 2x2 two two Legacy Carnage. Um, and he only had one sideline item, and that was Scrappy Doo, so pretty cool. I don't know how that team worked either. I didn't see any of these games, really. Um, Not sure. Next up was Isaac Denke, who just took his Oklahoma State's build sheet and then crossed out Oklahoma and put Nebraska so that was nice wow uh yeah he had all of his previous like opponents and everything listed on it and I was like well one judge already verified it so I really don't have to but I did anyhow uh so he had uh like Calder said prime spider-man with the sim black symbiote on him blue marvel scarry and iron man cloak of levitation on the sarkari and iron man jeez uh chip with green lantern ring venom magneto Looks like he was unequipped. Molecule Man with the Sinestro Core Ring. And then, oh, Tesseract was on Venom Magneto. That's Some okay. I couldn't sweet, remember. Sweet, sweet phasing action with Prob afterwards. Uh, sidelined, he had Scrappy Doo. He was one of the only people that I saw actually sideline uh, the mystery cards. So he had the Murder in the City Enduring. He had War Machine and then two Sentinels. So War Machine, I think. Who does that Sack come Man. For? Oh, it's great, Iron Man. Yeah, Stark Industries. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that was Tristan was fifth. That would have made Isaac the fourth seed. So they played in the top four. Um, third seed was Ethan. Maybe Lucas was third, and I got these backwards or something. So Ethan was running a animal theme with four maggots, and then a maggot on the sideline for no reason, just because. Uh, Legacy Lockjaw times two, Chip, um, High Evo, Green Lantern Ring on Chip, obviously. Uh, one Maggot had the Emotional Modifier, Cloak of Levitation on one of the Lockjaws, one Maggot had Blue Lantern Ring, and then Isotope A was on High Evo, which he comes with. Uh, so this team was actually, I actually did see this team play once or twice and it's a fairly standard kind of like team you can tell exactly what it does but it's actually surprisingly good it's got a lot of prob and then it also just straight up deletes certain characters um i think one of the main ones is sakari and iron man right he doesn't reduce damage he can just like choose to take one instead of right yeah whatever uh so maggots like four maggots just dropping off on a sakari and iron man drop him four clicks instantly it's kind of cool kind of a interesting take on animal he made it to the top eight obviously um got beat out in the top eight but still very cool team as far as <laughs> if you're just gonna spam one figure which i've done that and that's why i guess i've i too have ran way too many of a certain animal before uh <laughs> anyhow alex mater was next uh i have no idea what the placement was on any of these anymore because i just took the pictures and beautiful yeah so he technically would have been the second seed but that doesn't sound right maybe it maybe it was i don't know um but anyhow he was second seed on my pictures 
Uh, he was also running Prime Spider-Man with the black symbiote on him. He was running Carnage Silver Surfer, Sicarian Iron Man with the cloak, Venom Magneto with the Sinestro Core ring, Chip with Green Lantern ring, and the Commissioner with the Darkhold, which is an interesting but good choice. Uh, also running Sideline, War Machine, Scrappy-Doo, and then two Sentinels, two Scroll Spies. So similar kind of build, similar kind of idea, pretty solid. Um, I think the main idea on this is just Spider-Man's hard to deal with. He does a ton of damage, and while you're focusing on him, Carnage Silver Surfer's probably healing up. If Spider-Man's KOing things, then Carnage Silver Surfer is healing up. And then Sakari and Iron Man also just... There's a, like three very solid fairly cheap attackers on this team so yeah it's kind of nuts uh and then kevin i believe was uh, the first seed actually i'm almost positive he was uh so i really was yeah he was he was like, 4-0 yeah he was undefeated the whole day actually he must have played uh lucas in swiss then like that must have been okay. where lucas like lost because i lucas was like a lower seed than usual for like Nebraska states. So it must have been those two or some other team that or some other game that I didn't check. Uh but yeah, like Calder said, he was running uh Scarlet Witch, Black Knight, Wonder Woman. Wait, what? Black Knight. Oh yeah. Avengers Forever, Black Knight, Wonder Woman, Mad Jim Jaspers, Saturnine, and then Felix Faust, sidelining, Scrappy Doo, Cloak of Levitation, Sinestro Ring, Blue Ring. All Black Necro Sword and the Darkhold, um, Arachnite, Arachnite, Black Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes way more sense than Black Knight. Yeah. <laughs> I was Black like, Felix Faust. I almost remembered everything. I was like Black Knight. Uh, yeah. All right, but yeah. Uh, obviously, Scarlet Witch solid option. Um, top four ended up being. Let's see. I think it was Kevin. It was Kevin, Alex Mater, um, Lucas, and Isaac, right? I, yes, I'll say that. I, sure. I, <laughs> I did think so. have it pulled up at one point, but I think I closed that tab. But yeah, I think that's who it was. Anyhow. Uh, I again, I can't do a recap of any of these, but we did record the top four match, and then the final. Um, because it was getting late in the day, we couldn't start until around eleven, and that's when like we let people in, and then we didn't actually get kicked off till about eleven forty-five was when we actually started like seating people and stuff. So it was a, a long day, but we managed to get out of there at 6 30 because man uh i have never seen kevin just so absolutely focused laser focused just burned through lucas's team like like oh, dude. paper. that was the um, fastest game in hero i've ever seen in my entire life it was it was kind of embarrassing like uh i have to say it was i mean all i know is kevin won 300 to zero that's all i'm gonna say um we didn't get it filmed because the camera cut out, but oh boy, it was uh, it was over within minutes. Uh, we we barely even got out of top four, top four like seating. We knew instantly, like obviously who was left, and then it was it was almost over before I even like looked around. Like you know, it just happened. I stepped outside for one second and came back, and yeah, Kevin was the Nebraska State champion. So congrats to Kevin Nelson for pulling the big W. Old dubs, okay, and okay, Kevin Nelson, he did it. I was trying to think of my uh, my like tournament series uh, record against Kevin. I was trying to think of how many times we played. I don't actually know if I've ever beaten Kevin in a tournament. Like, I I oh, just no. can't remember back. We don't get paired off against each other often, for one. But in like my quote unquote like victories, I know that he's beaten me a few times. But I I don't know if I've ever oh, beaten sure. him. I know we've played, I should say, but yeah, seems like it's been a while since I've played against them. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think Nebraska yeah. State's for the most part. We had some Absolutely. battle royals. Congratulations! Pop out. 
those went insane. Man, in, insane battle royals, which by the time I decided, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do a BR. We got the all rare booster pack yeah, BR. Yeah. All the versus good stuff like, was gone. They had like the chases. They had Scarring Iron Man out there. They the had very Ghost first out one there. was uh, the very first battle royal. Like they were just mixing, matching boosters. Like they were just grabbing whatever. Uh, but one person pulled a Carnage Silver Surfer and someone else got a yeah. Mrs. Kang. So. Like nuts, yeah, and then there's also like super rares in that one, and then yeah, there's one with Sakari and Iron Man got pulled, there was one where Ghost Goblin got pulled. It was pretty nuts, yeah. The, uh, the level of pulls in the, at least the first couple, yeah. I think by oh, the man. time Calder got in, all the good stuff had been bled dry from the store, very much so, very much so, sadly, but that's okay. So, yeah, that was Nebraska States. Did we go over? Uh, Ian's team, do we want to talk about his? Well, I mean, we could talk about his game with Kevin, but we kind of already technically know how that ends, and it is also sh- videoed. So yeah. there will be a of that up on YouTube. There will be a little daily recap. I don't know if the opening of the overall recap tournament is going to stay the same. It might. I think it was fun. I don't know if anyone else will think it's fun. Um, but I will have a vlog sometime up this week, maybe even before you hear this. I doubt it, but maybe. Um, so stay tuned on the Dial H channel. We're going to have two of the top eight games up there. They're not going to have any of the crazy fancy editing like Ian usually does. We're just going to just get these up real quick. And so people can go ahead and see them, see what was played. Sadly, the way the tables were, uh, filming a long map looked pretty looked pretty awkward. I'm not going to lie. So there's one game of Ian and Kevin's where the map is long, and I wasn't able to get a good angle for the camera. So it's a pretty rough angle. I don't know if you can see all of their dice rolls, but I'm pretty sure just by looking at people either click or not click figures, you can figure out if it, if it hit or missed, you know? So at least I hope so. And I hope they talked loud enough you should be able to hear it all but it was fun the states map i don't know if we mentioned this at all it's like a no. just kind of a warehouse a bunch of crates and stuff so usually the state maps are like a reference to a movie i say usually i don't think they've been a reference to a movie in like years actually uh not since i don't think they partnered with old... WizKids because i don't think yeah they're... i don't think with like WizKids ip stuff i don't think they're allowed to make it WizKids legal and also sure um close enough to, yeah like attach an intellectual property to it and that's pretty fair um but the going theory i asked kevin this he was like well it's kind of like a warehouse with a bunch of boxes and he was like it's, maybe it's kind of like an indiana jones thing you know or it's like the area 51 or whatever it is uh that they like throw the ark of the covenant and all the other weird wacky stuff over the years they kind of just end every indiana jones movie with them shipping it off to this warehouse in the middle of this government warehouse in the middle of nowhere. Interesting. So yeah. maybe, maybe that's what it is, or maybe it's just a warehouse with a bunch of crates. But it is the first ROC map, I believe, that is a Battle Royale map size, that is an official size versus just being made for Battle Royales. This is like actually a map made for whatever, the normal standard play, like all these Avengers 60th maps, etc. I will say, of note, it's the new size. Yeah, it's the new size. The, the stuff that came out around Huntington's was the uh, the like large size stuff, and that was specifically uh, Scott Porter. I think wanting them just to be bigger maps too. Honestly, oh, sure. uh, I believe he said the like the way they wanted to make the racer garage just it would look better if it was whatever it's called a bigger sized map. I also think because. It's a flip side of another map. Uh, no, actually, it's not. The Race Garage isn't a flip side. Never mind. I know why the championship maps weren't small maps, because they didn't know that was going to happen last year when they let the champions make the maps. So that's why those ones are like full-size, old-style maps versus the new small-style maps. But that is South Dakota State's. This is a rare episode of Dial H where we actually don't have any listener questions. So I'll pose this question out to you guys. South Dakota State. So it was Nebraska State. Did I say? Oh, jeez. Yeah. It South was Dakota Nebraska State. State. It's going to be next weekend. Is, yeah. Or, it's July 8th. So actually two weekends, two weekends from now. And then yeah. two weekends after that is, I believe, Iowa State's, which we may also be at. Don't Don't know yet. Um, definitely at South Dakota, potentially at Iowa. Depends how hero clicks out. I am by then. Uh, cause I'm already like this team, but bo- it really bothers me when you sit down across from something and you're like, I can't beat that. 
So yeah. you're going to stomp my head in, Spider-Man. I, I hate you, Spider-Man. Uh, so, yeah. But I will pose this question to all you listeners. What did you play? Have you played in the States yet? What did you play? If you haven't played in a States tournament yet, what are you thinking about playing? And what States tournament are you going to? We don't necessarily have to be like, yeah, here's all your secret tech. You're going to go to a States tournament. But if you just want to tell us, so we can have a little fun time and be like, oh, that team's cool. Or if you're like me, who's like, yeah, I know this Captain America or this, you know, Batman isn't the best, but I want to play him on my team anyways. That's really cool. And I love it when people do stuff like that in their team builds. Uh, but yeah, send us any fun States teams that you already played or going to play. Let us know. Write, write into us. How was your state's experience? How many players did you get? We had a great 24 players. Very respectful for yeah. Nebraska. Was pretty solid really awesome. turnout. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do wish uh, some of the crew from Lincoln would have been there. I haven't oh, seen yeah. them since last year. I just figured some of them might have yeah. come up. But it didn't like happen. Richard. Yeah. What was going on? I, I feel like Mostly we, we probably should have... Uh, posted a bit more about it made it a little more public because we i think Probably. we only shared it to omaha clicks the omaha clicks group um, sure yeah we probably should have like shared it to like i don't know some other thing problem Dang. was like didn't know i didn't want to like <laughs> i didn't know for sure that we were going to get the kit on time just oh. cause, like i didn't have any tracking information and stuff and i didn't really want to like throw all my weight behind something and then people like show up and I'm like, yeah, the kid's not here. So I'll write down your names and you can like pick it up from me later. <laughs> what I, you know, sure. it was just, it was one of those situations where I was like, I, I want people to show up, but I'm going to be really sad and really upset if everyone shows up to do this and we don't have like the prizing and stuff, but luckily it did get there in time. I just wasn't made aware of it until like the day before. So yeah. Gotcha. Under that's kind of understandable. You don't want people to be like, "Hey, come go," and then it's like, "Oh, we don't have it." Ugh. You know, it's pretty fair, pretty awkward. Oopsie, no prizing. We'll get it to you later. Yeah. But if you are planning on playing in states and you haven't played in it yet, uh, right. maybe you should check out good old coolstuffinc.com, or you can pick up some of those missing pieces for your state's team you know check out the latest hero clicks singles or maybe pick up some sealed products to have some fun uh, battle royals of your own or just get lucky and pull some cool stuff uh for some reason big bertha is one of the top sellers and oh it's out of stock that's an old figure to be listed prominently as it is but uh <laughs> just scrolling through make sure you use code dial uh dial five to get five percent off all your HeroClix orders on CoolStuffInc.com. And then if you're looking to buy some sealed products from the source, going at shop.wizkids.com, make sure you use code DIALH10 to get 10% off your HeroClix orders, not including Iconics, I believe, right? I think that's not Iconics, and I think also not Play at Home Kits, it must be, because we had some people message us about... Okay, maybe not Play at, play at home, home Kits. We'll have to, we'll have to message them and see see if that's just a glitch or if that's how it's supposed to be but yes uh hero clicks bricks stuff like that the things that come with free stuff and then i guess there's going to be a i think they showed off a upcoming yeah we talked about this a while back but there's going to be a online exclusive play at home kit that you'll only be able to get from there apparently so check that out i don't know if the code will work on it but make sure you check it out anyhow and use code dial h10 when you do so and real quick, shout out to Brendan, who like was just a big Dial H fan and came to the tournament and took pictures with Simeon and Ian and I. It was really cool, and I super appreciated that, especially having people like walk up to us and be like, hey, really enjoy your podcast, really enjoy your YouTube channel. Yeah, enjoy he said you guys he, do for the, he really you know, liked our coverage of uh, other events and stuff, so he was he was happy to like see Worlds awesome. and then he, yeah, he like, name-dropped specifically uh, the Huntington's event and the Florida event, so... Oh, awesome. Perfect. Then, yeah, I, you know, love, we love making videos for you guys, and it's always awesome when we get that feedback, especially, like, in real life, you comment online, all that, it's, it's really great, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's why we do it, because people, people really do enjoy, like, watching and seeing everything that we have to offer, and they want to see these events, so. Yeah, I keep it, telling it was my, just, it really my meant therapist a lot. that the listeners are real, and uh, she's like, no, no, 
<laughs> they're not. And then I meet them, and I'm like, see, please come to come to therapy with me, please, please, just oh, you got, just once, just come on, please, just do it. I need to prove myself right. Uh, and with that, I'll say, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like, 100 instant deadpan and humor. Over oh, they, uh, six over people there. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. They're going to be able to edit that out for sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clicks like that for everyone. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I'm not crazy. You're